Hello, my, my name is Bianca, and uh, I'm standing here to preach the gospel. To preach the gospel to the people here, standing here today. I'm going to take you to Matthew 24, 14. Because the word of God is the truth, the Bible is the truth. And every single event that's taking place in the Bible today, it's coming to pass. It's coming true. Now, the word of God, the gospel, it is prophetic that it is to be preached in the whole world. The Bible, the word of God, is to be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Now it's the last day I get to preach the gospel here because I've preached the gospel here for five days already. For five days. So I have to go to other areas to preach the gospel. I'm sorry for waking me back up. And uh, I see there isn't much activity here anyways. I'm here to, to show you the light, to preach to you the good news of Jesus Christ. And uh, I want you to understand that the things that are going on in this world is only going to get worse. The violence, the anger, the wrath, the betrayal, the jealousies. The wickedness that is taking place in the world is only going to get worse. And I have to tell you this. Because the word of God is the truth. And it's going to tell you what are the things that are going to happen upon the earth. We're talking about the destruction of the world. We're talking about natural disasters. Earthquakes, tornadoes. Volcanoes. Earthquakes in diverse places. The protest, police brutality, the violence. These are all signs of the end times. These are all signs of Jesus Christ who is soon to return for his remnant, for those who believe in him. And I have to tell you this because Matthew 24, 14 is, gonna, is coming true. The word is to be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations. The word of God is to be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Once this word has been preached to every creature under heaven. Once this word has been preached to every creature under heaven, to every nation, then the end will come. So I'm not here by accident. I'm here because I'm playing a part in making this prophecy come true. I'm not of myself. I preach only Jesus Christ. But the word of God must be fulfilled. Everybody must know who Jesus Christ is and what he did when he came to the earth. Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh as a human being. Why? So he can be a ransom for your sins. So that you might escape the wrath of God. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Who came to the earth. Who came to the world and was manifested to the world. So that he might be a ransom for your sins. So that you might escape the wrath of God. When you go to church, they don't want to tell you 
that God hates sin. God hates sin and has zero tolerance for sin. Now, God loved the world for John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I repeat, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Each and every one of you has a gift of life. You have a gift from God. God is in each and every one of you. God is in you and through you. And you exist and you stand and you walk because of God. Because of the mercy of God. Do not neglect that gift that he's giving you. He has given you a gift of salvation. But the only way that that gift can be quenched. But the only way that gift can be quenched is by sin. So he has asked each and every one of us to repent from our sins. To forsake our wickedness. To forsake sin and repent turn away from maliciousness and wickedness so that you might be able to receive the gift of salvation to become righteous and receive the righteousness of God which is by faith which is by faith in his word in the truth the only truth in the existence of this planet is the word of God there is no other way to God, only through Jesus Christ. And the Word of God shows you how you ought to behave, how you ought to walk, how you ought to obey God, so that you might escape the wrath of God. There are many people who are part of the falling away because they chose to reject the truth, because they chose to depart from the living God. They chose to follow their own desires and choose to follow their own ways. And those will not escape the wrath of God. That is the reason why I'm, te I'm standing here telling you the truth to tell you that you must come to the knowledge of the truth so that you might escape the wrath of God. Now this world is in darkness. It's in gross darkness and it's only getting worse. And the people are going to become more evil. The people are going to become more corrupted, more evil. You know why? Because they hated the truth. Because they hated Jesus Christ. Because they didn't want to hear of the truth. This is the light of the world. The light of the world. God is a God of righteousness. He is a God of truth. He is a God of peace. He is a God of love. Sorry. God is a God of love, of righteousness, of peace, and of truth. And he wants all of you to come to the knowledge of the truth that is Jesus Christ, the righteous one, the only righteous one, who intercedes for you so that you might escape the wrath of God. He is interceding for you now as we speak. He is the peace of God and with us. Because without Jesus Christ, there is no peace. 
Jesus Christ is the peace between God and mankind. Jesus Christ destroyed the enmity that is between God and man to give you mercy, to begin you again to a lively hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He endured, he endured torment and torture and pain so that you might not bear, bear the burdens of your sins. So that you might come to repentance and turn away from wickedness and maliciousness and hate and anger and turn away from sin and forsake sin and seek after righteousness, after the truth of the knowledge of God through the gospel that is given to us through the word of God. The word of God reveals the will of God for you. Come to the knowledge of the truth that is Jesus Christ. I have two Bibles. I can give you, whoever wants a Bible, I have one. So that you might come to the knowledge of the truth and escape the sorrows that are going to take place upon the earth. The world is getting more evil, more darker as a consequence for sin, as a consequence for rebelliousness against the commandments of the Most High God, the Lord Jesus Christ. His judgment is already upon the earth. His judgment is already upon the earth. And if you want to escape the sorrows and the devastations that are going to take place upon the earth, accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and forsake sin. Repent of your sins and turn away from your sins. Turn away from the wickedness, from the maliciousness, the anger, and the jealousy, and all evil. Turn away from that. And seek after righteousness, and love, and peace, and goodness, and love one another. Not hate one another, but love one another. This is the will of God for all of you, because all of you are members one of another. The children of God. But the world and the ruler of this world doesn't want you to have that knowledge. Doesn't want you to know what is the will of God in your life. Because he is an enemy of God. And we each have an adversary. There is a war for the souls of mankind. There is a war. There is a spiritual war that is being waged for the souls of mankind. It's a serious war because the devil doesn't have much time left. His time is short. So he's trying to deceive as many people as possible to get them to come out of the truth, to get them to turn their ears away from the truth that is the Lord Jesus Christ and his gospel, the Bible, the word of God, the only true word of God. So he's using so many avenues to deceive, to deceive, so that you might not come to the knowledge of the truth, so that you might not come to the knowledge of the living God. I'm not standing here in 
vain. I'm here to tell you the truth. You need to wake up. I'm trying to tell you that we have to wake up. This world is coming to an end. This world is a dead end. And if you don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and repent for your sins, then you won't escape the wrath of God. You won't escape the sorrows that are going to happen upon the earth. You won't escape the great tribulation. There is a great tribulation that is heading our way. There's going to be pestilences, famine like you've never seen before. Pestilences, famine, natural disasters. And in the great tribulation, there will be the greatest earthquake that the world has ever encountered. In the great tribulation, no man can be saved unless those days are shortened. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. God is no respecter of persons. He loves each and every one of you. And he wants you to come to the knowledge of the truth. All he asks is obedience. All he asks is obedience. That's all he asks. That you forsake your sins and that you obey the word of God. That's all he asks. And you will be and you will escape. You will escape the wrath and the judgment and the and the tribulations that this world is gonna face.
chapter 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, and Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Truly I say unto you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when will these things be? In other words, tell us when will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming, of your appearing, of your return, and of the end of the world? Because the world is coming to an end. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then will they deliver you up to be afflicted and will kill you. And you will be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then will many be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. And many false prophets will rise and will deceive many. And because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. So many false prophets will rise and will deceive many. Man, I can count how many pro uh, prophets and preachers are false, are wolves in sheep's clothing, that are already a sign of the reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ coming very soon. And many false prophets will rise and will deceive many. And because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. But he that will endure unto the end, the same will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then will the end come. This gospel is a witness to you today that you have heard the word of God, that you have heard the truth. And you can't say no one told you the truth. When you therefore will see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso reads, let him understand. The abomination of desolation is the people who are part of the falling away. And these people who are part of the falling away, who did not love the truth, but loved the deception will be delivered unto a strong delusion. And that strong delusion will have to serve the Antichrist. Those people will serve the Antichrist. Those who are part of the abomination of desolation. When they bring about the altar again in the temple of Jerusalem and will do abominable sacrifices of animals upon the altar, in Jerusalem, that is the abomination of desolation. When you therefore see the abomination of desolation, that will be a real red flag for you. 
a real sign. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that, that, that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray you that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then will be great tribulation, such as not, I was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever will be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if any man will say unto you, Lo, here is the Christ, or there, believe it not. For there will arise false Christ and false prophets and will show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they will deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Therefore, if they, if they will say unto you, behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, but even not. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so will also the coming of the Son of Man be the Lord Jesus Christ. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days where the sun be darkened and the moon will not give her light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will the appear, then, and then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then will all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they will, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. This is how Jesus Christ is gonna return. But now is the time to seek him. Now is the time to seek the Lord Jesus Christ while you still can, while he still has mercy upon you, upon the earth now. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ while you still can today. Accept him as your Lord and Savior and forsake your sins and come to and come to seek after righteousness and obedience to the will of God that is revealed to you by the word of God so that you might escape the wrath of God, so that you might escape the sorrows that are gonna happen upon the earth because the world is coming to an end. The world is coming to an end. May not be today, but it will. Are you gonna be ready for the Lord Jesus Christ when he returns? Because some people might laugh and say he's not coming, but you know what, he is. He is coming back. And those that believe in him today and those that decided to obey the word of God and to forsake sin and to repent. Repentance is turning away from your sins. Repentance is forsaking wickedness. That is repentance. And if you continue with that, and if you continue repenting and you obey the word of God, you will be taken in the rapture and you will escape the great tribulation that will take place upon the earth. You already see the signs. You already see the devastations, the protests, the violence, the natural disasters. You already see the signs. If you decide to continue to be sleeping, then you're gonna be taken with the deception. You're gonna be taken with the antichrist. You're going to be delivered onto a strong delusion. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ today and come to the knowledge of the truth so that you might escape the wrath of God. Come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Repent or perish. Repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. We need to wake up from sleeping. We don't have much time left. The events that are, that are spoken of by Daniel and the prophets, which is written in the word of God, will happen. It will happen. The great tribulation will happen. Are you going to be ready for Jesus Christ? Are you going to be found blameless? Or are you going to be found with blame at his return? For no one knows the day nor the hour when the Lord Jesus Christ will come back. No one knows the day nor the hour when the Lord Jesus Christ will come back. So while mercy is still upon the earth today, accept him as your Lord and Savior because you're not even guaranteed tomorrow. And what you do today can determine your eternity. Everything in this world is temporary. Temporary. But when we die, we have a hereafter. And certainly we have a hereafter. And it is an eternity. An eternity. And there is no saying, I'm sorry, God. He's going to say, it's too late. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. He's going to say, I don't know you. Those who did not want to obey the word of God. He's going to say, I don't know you. He's going to say, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. Who love unrighteousness and wickedness and sin. That's exactly what he's going to say. And then those that perish will have their place in the lake of fire with the devil and his demons. And this is the truth. And that's why I'm standing here to tell you the truth so that you might not go there. Because God is the way that leads to destruction. And many people go in by it. But narrow is the way that leads to life. And very and I mean, very few people find it. So come to the knowledge of the truth that is Jesus Christ. I have two Bibles. Anybody who wants a Bible, I'll give you a Bible. I have spoken to you a lot of information on the prophetic events that are going to happen. Are you going to continue in your darkness? Are you going to continue in your wickedness? Are you going to die in your sins? It's not worth it. Believe me, it's not worth it. I have two Bibles. I give you a Bible. And you can read it so he can sanctify you. He wants to sanctify you and cleanse you from the darkness that you've accumulated throughout the, the time that you were living on this earth. If you read the Bible, he will cleanse you and sanctify you. And this is necessary so you don't grieve the Holy Spirit. We all have a Holy Spirit. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. For the kingdom of heaven is inside you. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Because when he returns, you must have oil in your lamps. Meaning, you must have the Holy Spirit inside you. Strengthened inside you. And the only way he can be strengthened is by reading God's word. Anybody wants a Bible? I have a Bible. It's free. I'll give you a Bible. You want a Bible? Anybody wants a Bible? I have a Bible. You want a Bible? You want a Bible? A
me to you John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This life is in Jesus Christ, who is interceding. And the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way to God, only through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's the confirmation that only through Jesus Christ can you be saved. Because the world through him, through Jesus Christ, might be saved. He that believes on him, he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Reproved. But he that does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are in God. So if you are of the light, if you love the light, you will come to the light. You will come to the light and let the Lord Jesus Christ cleanse you, sanctify you, so that you might be sanctified and ready for his return. Because Jesus Christ will return for his remnant, for the elect, for those who believe on him today. So again, I have two Bibles. I'm only going to say this one more time because I'm really done preaching. I have two Bibles left. Anybody wants a Bible? I'll give you a Bible. Come to the knowledge of the truth. I have a Bible. Escape the great deception. Escape the deception. Escape the great tribulation. The earth. earth. Do you want a Bible?
in the Bible? No. Well, I pray, I pray that you guys repent from your sins. I, re I pray that you come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, if you don't want to accept the Bible today, but that you would pray to God, just say, Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Wash me clean. I want to know you. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. That's all you have to say. And you're going to see how things are going to change for you. And then you come to read the Bible, to know the will of God for your life, to obey his word. That's all he asks.